Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. This is the Open Red TV. If it's your first time in this channel, hit that subscribe button on your way in and that notification bell and make sure to put on click on all so you can be alert when I post a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for being here again with us today. Today's message is for men. At least from the age of 12, which I think is the age of accountability, all the way to, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60, any age you are, mostly if you are um, single. So today's message is for single men, whether you are black, white, Asian, Latino, Hispanic, whatever, Indian, purple, brown, yellow, pink, it's for men. There is a growing sentiment to shame single men for not being married. Now, this is mostly, I'm, I'm going to give that to all that group age from 12 and up, if that are single, but it's most specifically for late 20s to 40s-ish men. But I can give you like a synopsis. I want you men to stop looking for a girlfriend or a wife. And that applies to all the group age from 12 to beyond. Don't be looking for a girlfriend or a wife. Okay? Yeah. Don't be looking for a girlfriend or a wife. Live your life according to God's principle. Whatever God tells you to do, do that. But don't think you are supposed to look for a woman, a girlfriend, or a wife. Don't. Okay? Now, for the, for the older men, for the um, 20, late 20s, 30s, and 40 men, type of men, um, there is a growing sentiment within churches where they are shaming men for not being married. And I think that is one reason why men are leaving churches in mass. Because most of those pastors, their primary agenda is to kill to the women because whatever, now those women are single, which means whatever the pastor says, they agree with him. And that's how you know, they keep funding those churches with their money and because the pastor sees that he's making lots of money off the women he has to preach to cater to the women to make them feel good so they keep coming to the churches they don't preach the truth they preach to cater to the women if this is your church i want you to know you don't have to leave the depot the denomination but you can leave that, that particular church. You can go to a different church within your denomination. For instance, if I don't like my church as a Seventh-day Adventist, if I don't like the church that I'm going to, my local church, I can go to another church 30 minutes from where I live or an hour from where I live. I'm still a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm just not going to the church in my local area. If you are a Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Evangelical, whatever, you can do the same. You don't have to leave your denomination. Now, John MacArthur was asked a question, and he won't believe the answer that he gave. Let's take a listen. I have a question regarding First Corinthians seven. So, uh, so I've noticed that uh, many of my brothers and and I, all of us meet the First Corinthians 7 uh, prerequisite. Uh, we're wrestling with God and searching out a woman to potentially be a helpmate. Um, I've noticed in myself and I've heard brothers express this paradox of sorts uh, that we recognize the fact that we have romanticized romance and have at times set up this unknown woman as an idol, discontent with what God has given us. But we also know that a single man with conscious sexual feelings is not good alone and that God has specifically created us to have a wife. So my question is, how do we reconcile these two thoughts in terms of timing? And if we spend too much, or if we spend time devoting ourselves to ministry and to God, uh, making sure our motives are pure and asking a girl out, it would seem that we are disobeying the apostles' command in 1 Corinthians 7. 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, you might, you might be eager to obey the command but can't find anybody who's willing to marry you. So <laughs> there's, there's, there's always that reality. So uh, um, yeah, I, I, this is a really important question, Ben, because um, marriage is the grace of life. Uh, ma marriage is the most fulfilling relationship in life on every possible front. And this particular culture we live in today has postponed that uh, more and more. It seems like every year the, married, the average marriage age gets older and older and older and older. And uh, this puts tremendous pressure on young people to maintain purity when they have reached the age where they would desire to be married and desire to start a family. So all I can do is uh, to exhort Christian people not to get caught up in what you said, not to get caught up in the perfections that this society drags in front of you which are not related to reality. I, I think you have to look at yourself, and this may help, you have to look at yourself in the way that uh, Paul described marriage in Ephesians 5. He, he basically says that a husband is like a savior to his wife. That's essentially what it says, and, and I, think, I think the burden really lies with men to see themselves as those who rescue women from loneliness, who rescue women from being in an uh, unfulfilled life, from being in, in a place where they aren't protected, they aren't provided for, they aren't cared for, they aren't loved, they aren't given the opportunity to have children. But what if the women don't want to be saved, though? Are you going to force them? Because the narrative today is, first thing first, whatever a man can do, a woman can do better. That's the feminism agenda. That's number one. Number two, the, the other agenda is, I don't need a man. I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need a man. Number three, well, I don't want to be with a man if I have to go 50-50. Number four, if he is not six foot tall with a six-pack ab, with a six-inch penis, with a six-figure salary, meaning the four sixes, I'm not, I'm not settling because I deserve more than that. Wait, does he know what's going on in the world right now? Is he actually look... Okay. Men, men, I'm going to speak to you actually. Um, I'm going to speak to you uh, face to face right now. Men, it is not your job to save a woman. It is not your job. Nowhere in the Bible. Does God require men to save a woman? This guy is single, yet John MacArthur is trying to apply Ephesians chapter 5 that has to do with married people. This is for me. Ephesians chapter 5 is for married people. That guy is single, and he is talking about 1 Corinthians 7 from verse 25. Because he is a single man. He's not married. So, no way a man should save a woman that is not his wife. I would say, people you could, you could die for is maybe your sister. Even though, you, even though it's not your wife, you can if you want to. Now, you can die for any, anybody. But, Ephesians chapter 5 is about husband and wife. It's not for boyfriend and girlfriend. It's not for a man and a stranger. No. That chapter 5 of Ephesians does not apply to single men. Okay? So men, remember, it is not your job to save a woman. It is not your job. Unless she's your wife. Even if it's your sister, your cousin, your mom, your, your niece, it's not your job. 
but your wife, it is your duty. Now, you can be nice and protect everybody else that you know that you love, but it's not your wife. Let's keep on moving. So, uh, from, from what I would experience in, in our society, it's the men that have to step up. And I honestly do not know what in the world they are waiting for. I have threatened many times to line up all the single women on one side, all the single men on the other side, and assign you a wife. But I, instead of looking for someone who is some kind of trophy, you need to look to someone who loves Christ, that, that you can be a savior to that person and a protector and a provider and, and a lover and um, be what Christ is to His church because that's the picture. And I, I strongly exhort young men to find a wife because in that finding is God's greatest gift in this world and it allows Okay, we're gonna stop that. Um, let's let's look at uh, let's look at what First Corinthians chapter seven is talking about. Okay, so First Corinthians chapter seven is talking about um, the uh, the unmarried is talking to the unmarried men and women okay now concerning virgins i have no commandment of the lord yet i give my judgment as unto one that hath obtained mercy of the lord to be faithful i suppose therefore that this is a good for the present distress i say that this is good for a man so to be art thou bound unto a wife Seek not to be loose, meaning if you are married, don't seek to be unmarried. If you are loose, meaning if you are single, do not look for a wife. I didn't write that. I'm telling you. And you can read the whole chapter if you want. But if, but, and if thou, if you are married, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in this flesh, but I spare you. Guys, men, this is for you. You can read the rest of the chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Do not let any pastor shame you to, be, be, to believe that you have to be married. God said, it is not good that men should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet. That was before sin. After sin, God never said it is not good for a man to be alone. Now, you as a man, you need to ask God what His will for you is. And if He tells you, I have prepared a woman for you, here she is, then yes, you go and take her. You know why? Because you wouldn't have to work. You wouldn't have to so-called step up. The woman that loves you will love you as you are. Actually, you know what? I learned this from a friend, from another woman. She told me, do not go and chase a woman. Okay? Love the woman that already loves you. If you have to prove yourself to a woman that you are the right man, that's the wrong woman. Because the woman that already loves you, she loves you for who you are. Love the woman who loves you. First. So men, like I said, if you are in a church, in a local church, and it's, make, and it's look as if you are being shamed for being a successful man. You are in your late 20s and you are single and they are shaming you because you're not married. You can leave that particular church. You don't have to leave your denomination. You can leave that particular church. Go to another church where God's word is the primary focus. 
because you know why? They won't shame those women for wasting their earliest years, their best years, where they could have gotten married. They won't shame them because they have to cater to the women. They won't shame those women for wasting their youthful years, for focusing only on their careers and the streets, and then later on, oh, I want to get married. They won't shame those women who in their earliest and best years, they were bypassing the good men for the bad boys. They won't shame them in the church. So you, you have the choice. You can leave that particular church and go somewhere else where God's word is uplifted first and foremost. This was my take for you guys. That method for the men. I must see you again. Actually, very soon, maybe. Again, if it is your first time here, don't forget to hit that like button on the way out and the subscribe button as well and that notification bell. It was again the Brand Your TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.